Today I'm going to teach you how to work the Tunisian crochet stitch called the lattice stitch. We are going to learn to work it in the round as if you were making a cow. Like the Merry, Very Merry Cow by Little Monkey Designs that I created. So first of all, with the Tunisian crochet in the round, you need a double ended hook. This is a K. We're going to be using worsted weight yarn. You usually want a hook that is several hook sizes above what your yarn recommends. So for a worsted weight, they recommend an H or a J I, and we are going to be using a K. You can play around with the different size hooks and see which results you like better. Also going to need a stitch marker when you're working Tunisia crochet in the round. So first we are going to start by chaining and I'm just going to do a small version of the larger cow stitch. And when you're working this stitch we need an odd number of stitches. So just go ahead and make a slip knot it's like you regularly would and we are going to work 21 chains. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one. Then when you're working on Tunisian crochet, you actually work on the back side and you're going to pick up these little bumps, the loops, the third loop is what you're going to work in. So we are going to be working on those. So we're going to slip stitch our chain together to make a circle. And so we are going to make sure we don't twist it. So circle it around so that the back is up. We're going to slip stitch into that first loop. Slip stitch in, grab a loop, come up, and then pull it all the way through. And that is our first stitch. So we're going to go ahead and put a stitch marker on that first loop. Then as with um, Tunisia crochet, we're going to now work in the back bumps and pick up a loop and keep the loop on the hook. So you just insert your hook in that loop grab some yarn and pull it through and just leave it right there. So we are going to work that way around until we've got um, about half of them or so on our hook. Now you don't have to have a hook quite this long, it's just the only one I could find. A shorter one is fine because you're not going to be working all of the stitches on your hook at the same time. So let's pick up about 10 and then we will or, um, and we will continue on. So we've got our first three on there. Find your next loop. Go under the loop. Yarn over and pull them through the loop and leave it there. So there's four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Whoops, our hook fell off. We need that for when we get back around. It's easier to do your stitching if you know where your first loop always is. All right, so. We should have 21 total. There's the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, it'd be really hard to keep forcing this around. There's no way to get all the way back around. So, with Tunisian crochet, you have a forward pass and then you have a reverse pass. But we're working in a circle. So, and because we are working in a circle, we will have to do a return pass a little different. So you can use the same skein of yarn and just pull from the other end, or to make it easier, I've just picked up a second skein to pull from. So here's our second skein. So what we're going to do then to do our return pass and why we have a double ended hook is we are going to push all of our loops to the other end and we are going to flip our project around. So then 
our first loop is right here. That's another reason to mark it so you know which way we're going. So then take a loop from your new yarn or the other end of your original yarn. Make a loop just like you would add a new yarn color. Give yourself a tail to weave in later and pull it through just that first loop. Now, that will be your new first loop. So take your stitch marker off and put it on this new loop that you just made. Whoops. See, I almost need a third hand here. All right. I'll try to keep all your loops about the same. So, we've got our new stitch marker on our first loop there. Now, we're going to yarn over and as with a return pass, we're going to go through two at a time. There's one and two. Come up, yarn over, go through two loops at a time. And we're going to do that until we leave about three or four loops still left on our hook. That's to keep them from getting too loose. So this again is our first return pass for about half of our little mini cowl here. So we'll leave it here. We got three of our stitches and then our first loop here. So you will see that your Tunisian stitches are actually vertical bars here. Those are the vertical bars that we're going to be working in when we work our next round. This right here, the round that we're working in is called our foundation round. So what we're going to do is work, continue our forward pass. So we're going to move our stitches back down to the other end and flip it all back around and we will continue picking up stitches. So we had 11, here's 12, 13. Remember we're going under that bump on the back of the chain, grabbing some yarn and pulling it back through. There's 14, 15, 16, so grab something. Now there's our next one. 17, 18, 19, 20. Sometimes the very last one's hard to see, but we know we have 21. There's our last bump right there. The reason why we want an odd number is because of how the lattice stitch is worked. You pretty much need an even number plus one, so an odd number. So there's the last of it. We're back around. There's the beginning of our next round. So we're going to continue the um, return pass. So scoot back to the other end, flip it, grab your other yarn, and tighten it up if it got a little loose. And we're going to continue our return pass to the end here. That would have been the end of our first row or our foundation row. So yarn over, pull through two like we were doing. Pull through two. All the way to the end. And then our actual stitch will begin. This is just setting the stage or creating the foundation row. And I like to go all the way to the end so I don't get confused when we're at the very end of the row. So now we're at the end of our return paths. So we are going to slide it to the other end of the hook and flip it over again. And we will grab our other yarn. There we go. Now, make sure that all your stitches are going the same way. Don't twist anything. Now. We are going to be working the lattice stitch, which is a mixture of the Tunisian simple stitch and a Tunisian simple stitch two together. So I'm going to show you on a Tunisian simple stitch, you find your first vertical bar. And here is your first vertical bar. You go under it, you go through it, 
you yarn over and you pull a loop up and that creates a Tunisian simple stitch. You would find your next loop, go through it, yarn over and come up and that creates your Tunisian simple stitch. But we are going to be doing a version of that and what it begins with is actually a Tunisian simple stitch two together. So you will go through your first vertical bar and your second vertical bar and you're going to yarn over and pull through both of them. Now that's kind of like decreasing but we don't want to decrease so we're going to go back then and that first bar that we went through we're going to go through again and just work a Tunisian simple stitch. And it crossed those stitches is what it did. So then we'll find our next two vertical bars. There they are right there. We're going to put our hook under one and then the second one. Yarn over and pull through both of them. Then we're going to go back under the first one, grab some yarn and pull back up. So we aren't decreasing. We still have the same number of stitches and you will see that they kind of sit in pairs of two because of the way we work them. So we're going to work that around until our hook is about as full as we can get it. We'll find the next two vertical bars, go through and them together, yarn over under, uh, insert your hook under the first one that you worked, grab some yarn and come back up. Now you've got one, two, three. You've your Tunisian simple stitch, two together, plus then a Tunisian simple stitch. So we'll do it again. Find our next two vertical bars. Yarn over, yarn, go through both of them together. Yarn over and pull all the way through both of them. Then find that first one, go back under the first one, grab some yarn and come back up. Let's see if we can work one more. Here's the next vertical bar. There's the next two vertical bars. Yarn over, draw through both of them. Tunisian simple stitch, two together. Now adjust the Tunisian simple stitch in the first stitch of that pair. Let's see, maybe we can do one more before we get too tight here. Doesn't really matter how many you do. There's the next two vertical bars. This one got a little bit tighter. There's one, two, yarn over and pull through both of them, then come up and yarn over and pull through one. Now we're going to, it's getting a little tight, we're going to go ahead, smooth everything to the other end of your hook, flip it, and work a return pass. So when we work the return pass, we're going to just continue working two at a time. So there's two, and so then, um, we will leave our hook right there so that we can find it. All right, and we'll stop right here. And then we will slide them back down to the other end and we'll flip it back around find the yarn that we were working with to begin with and we'll continue in pattern. So we will find the next two vertical bars. There they are right there. Go under the first one, go under the second one, draw through both of them and pick the first one back up, yarn over and go back through. So that's a Tunisian simple stitch two together and then a Tunisian simple stitch in the first one of the pair. Here's our next two. Yarn over, or you insert, yarn over, pull through both of them, then insert just in the first one, yarn over, and come back up. It takes a, a couple um, of rows to be able to see the stitches, the um, stitch pattern show up really pretty. We'll find the next two vertical bars. There they are right there. Insert under both vertical bars, yarn over, pull through both, then just do a Tunisian simple stitch under the first bar. Alrighty, now let's look here. 
there is where our first one is. If we can find where we have our stitch marker will help us find where our first cross was. And there it is right there. So then you can count as you go. And remember, we have an odd number of stitches for a reason. It's because we want these X's to be offset. So we have one, two, three vertical bars left. So we're going to go under the two of them. Yarn over and pull through both. Then yarn over and do a Tunisian simple stitch just through the first one. Now, we will have one left right there. And so we'll work our return pass and then I'll show you what we do with that one left over. So move everything down to the other end of the hook, flip your hook, and let's work a few more return pass stitches. So just continue on, yarn over and pull through two at a time. Yarn over, pull through two at a time. And we're going to go all the way down to the end. It's, we are um, getting close. Yarn over. There we go at the end. Now we're going to push it to the other end, flip it around. Now it's a little bit easier once we've got a little bit more to hold on to. Now that was 20 and we've got 10 pairs of X's. So we have one stitch left. And in order to offset it, we're actually going to pick up that one stitch. And we are going to pick up the first stitch of the beginning of that row. So it will be this one in the first one in the V. So let me see if you can see it there. There's your X from the first stitch of the row. We're actually now working on the second row. So there are two vertical stitches tied together because of the X below. We're going to pick up the first one because we picked up the last one from the previous row, the first one of the next row. Yarn over and pull through both of them to do a Tunisian simple stitch together. Then yarn over and do a Tunisian simple stitch with the second one. Now our X's are offset. So then we will pick up the next vertical stitch and the next one. So the first one will be the last one of the X from below. The second one will be the first X in the next double pair. So if you ever go to pick them up and they're right next close to each other like this, you know you're wrong because they should never be together like that. They should always be the last one of the previous X and the first one of your next X. Yarn over, pull through both of them. Then insert under the first one, yarn over, and pull it back up. So you can see you've got some slants forming. And they're in line with the slant from the one, the row below. One, two. So we'll pick up the next vertical bar. There's that one. And then over here is our second one. Yarn over, pull through two to do a Tunisian simple stitch, two together. Then do a Tunisian simple stitch in the first stitch of that pair. And you're going to work that all the way around. I'll try to do it. And then when you've got your hook about as full as you can, then we will do the return pass. So again, you'll notice here's the first loop, then here's the second loop over here. So then go back and pick up the first one, yarn over and pull through. A little bit more yarn here. Let's see if we can work one more before we do a return pass. So then we will need to find the, here's the next one right here, and then the next vertical one is over here. Yarn over, pull through both of them, then yarn over and pull through the second one. So then if you spread it out, you can see that you have a nice slants forming and they are in line with the slants on the previous row. 
So to do a return pass, pull it all the way down, flip it around, grab that return pass, and we're working in the round now, so we're just gonna keep going. We don't need to do um, the chain one anymore. So like we did at the very beginning, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and two all the way till you get closer to the end. If you go all the way to the end, every time sometimes it makes your loops a little loose, only really go all the way to the end when I'm at the end of a row. And we forgot to move our hook back, our stitch marker back up. So we will stop right there and come back up here. And it's easier to find the beginning of that row if you move your stitch marker. So here is our first stitch right there. Now move it to the other end, flip it back around, and we will continue on in pattern. So I'm going to work it quickly and then we will talk about how to finish off your project. Here are the next two vertical stitches. We're going to work a Tunisian simple stitch, two together. Pull through both of them. There's our Tunisian simple stitch together. Then we're going to do Tunisian simple stitch in the first of those stitches. Here's the next one. There's one, two. Come back and do a Tunisian simple stitch in the first one. First and second. Now at some point it really won't matter whether you're at the end of this loop or not because you will just keep going and, and I would just keep going until you have the height of the cowl or the project that you're working on the right height. Now sometimes these get hard to find because you um, are um, doing them a little too tight like I did here. So anyways we will see if we can find that next one. There it is right there. Whoops. Pull through that one and that one. Then we'll come back and grab this one and this one. And if you're not sure, you can always work it and then make sure that it lines up with the slant from the row below. Now we're back to the beginning. So what we're going to do is finish our return pass for this row. So slide it to the other end, flip it, yarn over, and do two at a time. So do your return pass and this is how you do a return pass no matter what stitch you're using. Kind of like this lattice stitch because we're at the very end we're going to go all the way to the end and then we'll slide it to the other end and flip it around and we'll tighten that up just a little bit. Alright, let's see here. Now, I'm going to pull that out so you can see a little bit of the stitch pattern that you've created. You can see your slants here from the first row, second row, now we have the third. So when you are picking up stitches, you never pick them up straight together. It will always be the last of one pair and the first of the next pair. You'll pick those two up to do a Tunisian simple stitch, then you go back and work a Tunisian simple stitch in the first of the pair. Then it will be the next two. So work all the way around. You can count your slants. You'll need a odd number because the end of one row will be, will be worked together with the first of the next row in order to keep your slants all going at an angle. Then I will show you how to bind off. We will pretend that you are at the end of your cowl and you want to bind it all off. So you can work your pattern just like you've been working it. Get a right yarn going here. So you will go under. Let's find our very last stitch here of the row and the first of the next row, two just like, and you're going to work a Tunisian simple stitch, two together, but then you're going to come off 
and go through that loop. Then you will pick up just like a Tunisian simple stitch of the first of the pair, go under it, come up, but then go through that loop on the hook. So you'll always only have one on your hook when you're binding off. Pick up the next vertical stitch and the second one to work your Tunisian simple stitch. Go through both of them and then drop one off. Then go back and pick up the first one, do a Tunisian simple stitch, and then pull it through the loop on the hook. I will work one more pair. There's the next two vertical stitches, and over and pull through both of them. Bind off there. Go through the first one of the pair. Make your Tunisian simple stitch. Whoops. Grab that one back, and then put it through the loop on the hook. And then, it creates what looks like a chain across the top. So you'll have a pretty chain at the bottom and a pretty chain at the top. It's hard to see in this example, but you have the beginnings of a lattice stitch worked. As you can see in this cowl pattern,